Hey y'all, thanks for joining us for today's January Shiloh Saturday program, Paint Like Essie. My name is Kim Hosey, and today we're gonna to be painting a scene of the Arkansas Ozarks. I am here in West Fork, Arkansas, and behind me is the subject that we will be painting today for today's program. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, y'all, so I have the majority of my material set out that we're gonna be using for today's program. I have a variety of different types of colors of paint, um, the, the scene that we're going to be painting, there's a lot of greens and browns and different shades of gray, and then we're going to get a little bit of blue for the sky. If you all saw our, our Facebook and Instagram posts that we posted beforehand, these are the colors that we're going to be using for today's program. So if you have these colors, that's great. If not, you can always use similar colors or other colors that you have on hand. We're going to use our imagination for today's program. This is my first time painting a scene like this. So it's okay if it's not perfect, we're just gonna have fun doing it. Some other materials you might need are maybe a napkin or a cup of water to rinse off your brushes between the use of different colors. And then also, I'm outside right now, so if you all are painting inside, maybe just put down some old newspaper or maybe some, some recycled paper or plastic. Just go ahead and put that underneath whatever you're painting because we don't wanna accidentally get any paint on anything in our house. So before we get started painting, let's learn a little bit more about who Essie Ward was. Essie Ward was born in 1902 in Searcy County, Arkansas. Though she began creating art at a young age, Later in life, she became well known for her folk art relating to life in the Arkansas Ozarks. She painted many different scenes of the Arkansas Ozarks, including rural Arkansas farm scenes, landscapes, other natural scenes, various animals, and more. Throughout her lifetime, Essie didn't just paint, she sculpted, drew, and also made toys by hand. She and her husband, Jesse, raised seven children, as well as various farm animals, vegetables, and fruit trees on their farm near Marshall, Arkansas. After being diagnosed with cancer in 1959, Essie needed a change of pace and began to focus more on her paintings. Her art eventually gained regional and national attention. People from all around the country purchased Essie's artwork, and in 1970, she participated in the Smithsonian's Festival of American Folklife in Washington, D.C. Today, her artwork can be found in various countries around the world. Let's take a closer look at some of Essie's work. Essie included her trademark in each of her paintings. In this case, a trademark is a specific symbol or mark that is used to imply something was created by or belongs to someone. Can you all spot a reoccurring symbol that is painted within each of Essie's paintings? You all guessed it. Those two white marks that resemble rabbit or mule ears are Essie's trademark, and you can find those in each of her paintings. You'll also find two common characters in many of her paintings, an older pioneer couple, Hezekiah and Miranda. These two characters can be found representing various scenes of rural life in the Arkansas Ozarks, and oftentimes get themselves into some pretty eventful situations. So I have the camera focused on the masonite board that I will be painting on today. Masonite was the main material that Essie liked to paint on. As you can see, I kind of painted over a, a shade of white on the background just so the colors can show up a little bit better for y'all when you follow along with me. I took a picture of the scene we're gonna be painting so you guys can see what I'm painting as well as the scene that we're painting too. So hopefully that helps with you all when you're keeping in mind what we're painting. So for today's painting, I'm going to use a, what I call a palette. It's just a paper plate in order to paint just so you all can see my process a little easier. But Essie actually didn't use a palette or an easel when she painted. She used her paint brushes to get oil paint straight from the tube and supported her paintings usually in her lap or on a nearby piece of furniture. So for the purpose of today's program, I'm using acrylic paint. It's easy to find at your local Walmart or arts and crafts store. All right, for step number one, Essie oftentimes would sketch out what she was going to paint. This would help her um, get an idea in her head of, of what she'd like to include in her scenes or in her paintings. So right now, I'm gonna just paint the outline of the main parts of the 
landscape that we're gonna get and I'm gonna paint it in the color of paint that we're gonna use to fill in those shades so you all can get a, a better understanding of the colors that we're gonna be using for each section of the scene. Sometimes I like to mix my colors together to get different shades of certain colors. So I'm mixing my blue with my gray a bit. Cause it's kind of a, it's not really a blue, blue water. It's kind of gray, little, little bit of brown. So we'll go ahead and put some brown in there too. few trees that are up on the rocks. We're painting in January so the trees aren't going to be super bright green or they're not going to be beautiful fall colors either. They kind of have a mixture of, of green, brown, and then you see a lot of the branches of, of the trees that are, that are dormant right now during the winter time. So we're going to go ahead and just shade in some greenish, brownish, gray up there. Um, but we'll do that a little bit later when we're adding in the details to our scenes. For now, I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of the solid colors that we're using. And then later on, we'll go ahead and add in some details. It's an interesting type of day to be painting. I'm trying to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing and that the shadow isn't cast too much onto, onto the masonite. Feel free to go ahead and paint whatever you like, or of course you can continue to follow along with me. The good thing about painting and art is that it normally represents something meaningful to you or something that the artist enjoys or what the artist is trying to represent. You only have one paintbrush that's totally fine um, I'm just planning on using these two right here you can either rinse off the paint that you're using in your cup of water or use your napkin to rinse off the paint it's okay if your paints bleed together a little bit the things that we're painting have different shades of different colors anyway Okay, we're almost done with the ground portion and again don't worry if your lines aren't perfect or if your colors aren't exact or if you haven't filled in all the details of the grass or anything like that because we'll go ahead we're just going to get our main background first and then we'll fill in the details at a later time okay now i'm going to work my way up to filling in the background of the the rocks and the the overhangs and then we'll fill in the details of the trees after that but right now we're just focusing on the main portions of the painting the main background colors notice how my my browns and my gray are kind of blending together that's totally fine because if you look at the rocks it's not all just one shade of gray there's actually a lot of, of white different shades of gray some yellow some browns mixed in there
if you'd like to, you can go ahead and start shading in different colors on the rock. Okay, so as you can see, a majority of our background colors are blended in. So we can go ahead and start working on the details. I'm gonna mix my green and my brown and my gray together to get some nice shade of grass that I see growing along the edge of the river running through here. Getting, we don't want to get too much green, a little bit of green because there's not too much green out here today. Maybe we'll do another program in the fall or, or in the springtime when there's a lot of different colors outside. But Essie liked to, to paint all different scenes of life in the Ozarks. She, in different seasons as well, she painted a lot of scenes in the snow. But as you all can tell, today is pretty sunny outside. But Essie wouldn't always paint from what was happening in that moment. Sometimes she would paint her scenes based off of what she remembered life to be like in a certain memory or something that she experienced a lot in her life. Notice how I'm mixing in my brown or my tan with my green. It's not all just one color. Mixing in the different textures to get those blades of grass sticking up, popping out over the edge of the water. Ooh, there's something wonky attached to this paintbrush, so it has a mind of its own today. And if I'm going too fast for y'all or I'm going too slow for y'all, <laughs> sorry about that. Feel free to pause the video if I'm going a little too fast for you. You can always press play again once you're caught up. Okay. So we filled in a little bit of those details on the lower section of the, where the ground meets the water. I'm going to add in a little bit of detail to the rock section now. So the different shades of gray and brown and, and tan that I see. And this is just our next round of, of details, our, our next basic round of details, and we'll add in a little bit more in our next step some gray attached to that rock overhang, mixing my grays to get different, a gradual shade of different colors on the overhang. plop some different colors in there because you'll notice in the rocks there's so many different colors. I'm going to add a little bit of black to my plate of paint just to get some shadows and some darker details in there. Just a little bit. A little bit of black goes a long way when you're painting. Just different crevices, where you get those shadows and the indentions of the rocks. It's kind of what I'm using my black to represent right now. We're gonna have these different details go all the way down to the water line. All the way down. It's okay if it's not shaded in perfectly. It's like we said, different sections of the rock had different textures to it. Different colors. Oops. Went into the water a little bit there. Getting a little bit of a mixing my black and my grays and my tan together to get a little bit of a darker gray. It's 
said that. Black paint makes a, makes a big difference. Remember, this is just the, the base of our rocks. We're gonna go in and fill in the trees that are draping down and the different colors in a little bit too. So we're just creating that basic outline for the trees. As you can see in the picture that we're painting, we didn't just do a straight line of blue across, we're seeing a different perspective, the, kind of the bend of the river or bend of the water going through. So you can see it's kind of bending around a corner. And just for a little bit of perspective, I'll go ahead and add in some blue for the sky too. So I'll just do a little corner of blue up here. It's okay if our paint hasn't fully dried. Even see a little bit of a reflection in the of the rock overhang and the water a bit so I'll go ahead and add a little bit of tan just a little bit of tan into the water So we're gonna wait for that to dry just a little bit before we start putting our, our green details into it for the trees. And again, we're gonna mix our, our browns and our greens a little bit. And we're just using basic, basic paint brushes. So there's different paint brushes that different artists like to use to get different textures with their scenes. But for now, we're just gonna keep things simple. Also during this time, this would be great to start thinking of what type of trademark you all wanna to add to your painting. So remember your trademark is something that you think is cool or unique or maybe represents you. It's a symbol that you include in your painting so people can take a look at that painting and know that, oh, you're the artist, you're the one who created it. And I'm gonna add in a little trademark later on and I'm gonna see if you all can guess what my trademark is and, and notice where I put it. So I went ahead and added in a little bit more of the sky just to give us some context when we add in our trees so we can separate the rocks from, from the water and from the sky. So I'll go ahead and just add in a little bit more of that. It's a really blue sky today. It's a beautiful sky, so don't mind just using this straight blue. I keep mixing it with my gray accidentally. Let's go ahead and add more blue in. Okay, and again, I, I was trying to let that dry a little bit, so let's go ahead and add in some more details to the lower part of the section. If we want to, we can even add in a very thin, very thin line of just black or a shadow to differentiate between the rock, the rocks and the water. Very thin, very thin. Okay. We don't really need to do that too much with the ground section over here because our blades of grass and and all that is kind of going over the edge of the water okay and I'm gonna use a different paintbrush or at least try to get that black off as much as I can on this paintbrush and I'm gonna switch to my other paintbrush but again it's okay if you all just have one and just so I don't get the black mixed in with my greens Okay, and again, it's okay if our colors blend a little bit. 
if you look at the trees, they, those colors are blending. You've got green, brown, a little bit of rusty color, some gray popping out with those dormant branches right now. So I'm going to just kind of splat, 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 splat. And I'm going to try not to blend as much as I can because I'm going to try to keep the texture that the the bristles on the brush are creating because when you look at trees they don't look really smooth right they have a little bit of texture I'm just gonna keep the texture it's okay it's coming out pretty green I'm liking the color so I'm gonna keep it on the green side maybe add in a little bit more of a tan brown color and they don't have to be the same shape if you look at the trees that we're painting above they go straight up into the sky some hang down a little bit over the rocks again we're just splat 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 the bristles on the paintbrush are really good consistency for the trees I'll leave some room for the gray branches coming out. But we're gonna do that after our green dries a bit. So we still have a couple more steps. So it helps having that skyline a little bit. So it's not just rock and tree, rock and tree. Gradually start using a bit more brown and go down a little bit lower and it goes all the way across the rock line of our scene and I'm leaving a little bit of space too as you can see the blue is peeking out a little bit the the rocks are peeking out just a bit because there are some spaces in our tree line so as you can see we went all the way across our splatting technique worked pretty well in my opinion and while we're waiting for that to dry I'm gonna work on a couple more details down on the water line in the water put a little bit too much too much tan in so I'm gonna gonna get to that a little bit if you all want to you can add some fish in there maybe some ducks I am not really good at drawing animals S.C. Ward was really good at, at painting animals. You'll see in a lot of her paintings with Hezekiah and Miranda with their, their rural life on the farm paintings and scenes, they get into all different types of predicaments and a lot of the times there's different animals involved. I'm gonna mix my black and gray together just a little bit to get a little bit of a dark, dark gray, lighter dark gray. You don't want this to be too thick of a line, but we're gonna do our best. And we're gonna start working on those branches that are kind of popping out. So I'm trying not to do too many curves on the branches. They're kind of rigid, right? Some tree branches have curves to them. These look like they have all different types of Forks coming out all over the place. And they're pretty rigid, pretty straightforward. Some trunks and branches are thicker than others. Kind of made that one pretty thick. That's okay. We'll go back over with it, uh, with some green in a little bit. Somewhere peeking out of the tree line. not really any I don't really have a pattern or routine I'm doing I just kind of where I see blank space I'm getting some gray branches coming out of the tree line
Okay, and I'm gonna mix my greens and my brown together again and my little paint palette I got going on. And I did switch brushes back to my green tree brush. And we're just gonna splat, 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 splat. Over the gray, just kind of give it that look that it's intertwined with the leaves. Not all just sitting on top of them. You don't want to cover them up too much because we still want to be able to see them. This one kind of just looks like a spark. Okay, so now I'm going to go back in and add just a little bit more detail. Now that our rock overhang has dried a little bit, get that black and dark gray for the shadows. Again, that black goes a long way. Oop, got some blue in there. It's okay. I like blue. We can put blue on the rocks. Hope y'all are following along okay. Of course, add in your own interpretation to the scene. If you don't like exactly what I'm doing, that's okay. You don't have to follow exactly along. You can do however you feel is best with your painting. I'm gonna go back over that little thin line we put together. Sometimes I like to cheat and use my finger. So that's pretty much what we got, y'all. I think it looks pretty similar to what <laughs> the scene that we're looking at right now. You can go in and add in more touch-ups if you like. You can blend in your colors more. You can add in animals, more trees, whatever you'd like to do. But thank you all so much for joining us for today's program. I'd like to remind you that we do have an Essie Ward exhibit opening up at the museum on February 8th. So feel free to come in and check out that exhibit and you can learn more about Essie Ward. Also to learn more about Essie Ward, take a look at the link in the description of this video. We do have an online exhibit called A Real Satisfaction at shilohmuseum.org, which discusses more about Essie Ward. But thank you all so much for following along today, and I hope you learned something new. Happy Saturday, y'all.